We talked about presidential terms. So let's talk a little bit about what happens when presidents can't like finish their term. So obviously this newspaper headline is from an infamous event in American history. This was uh, President uh, Kennedy's assassination um, that took place in November of 1963. Um, there have been nine presidents that have been unable in American history to finish their term for one reason or another. Um, four presidents have died of natural causes, four including Kennedy, as pictured here in the newspaper, were assassinated and one resigned. So we've had a total of nine presidents in American history that have been unable to finish their term. So in 1947, um, there was actually a law passed called the Presidential Succession Act. And this actually spelled out in great detail what the order of presidential succession would be. So um, you'll notice the pretty lengthy list. And the first three that start off the list are all at the top because they are actually people um, that individuals vote for. Uh, the vice president is elected, the speaker of the house is elected, and the president pro temp of the Senate is elected. So all three of the first um, slots in the order of presidential succession, meaning the president dies, the VP takes over. If the president and VP die, the speaker of the house takes over and so on and so forth, right? So this is the list of who is like next person up. Um, but again, the top three are leading off because they all receive votes. The next four, um, really the rest, are the order of the cabinet positions, not in their significance, but in the order of their creation. So Secretary of State, Secretary of Treasury, Secretary of Defense, and Attorney General are were the first four cabinet uh, positions, like the president's closest advisors. And then this has been added to throughout American history as the cabinet has um, increased for various reasons. The most recent cabinet position was added after September 11, 2001, which was the Department of Homeland Security. So that's the remainder of those. Um, so again, it's not the cabinet positions in the order of their um, importance, it's their order of their creation, like their birth. Um, and again, we've, we've never actually gone below the vice president for any particular scenario, but there is a plan in place just in case. Another amendment that sort of like relates to this topic a little bit is the 25th Amendment that was passed in 1967. Um, this deals with presidential disability. So um, the presidential succession list is easy to implement because the president is, is, is like dies in office. So it's clear that somebody has to take over. Um, but what happens if the president is doesn't die in office, but suffers from some sort of potential um, disability um, while president that prevents them from exercising like the powers of their office? That's what the 25th Amendment deals with. One of the things that it specifies is that power can be transferred voluntarily as long as pre the president writes a note to Congress. It's like, what does this mean? Um, you know, presidents are human. Um, they have to have medical procedures like other people do. So. Clearly, if you were to have a medical procedure that would put you under anesthesia, you wouldn't be able to really fulfill the duties of your job. So you could temporarily transfer power to the vice president. And then when the initial president is feeling better, the vice president would transfer power back. Right. That's pretty clear cut. And that's been used a bunch of times when presidents have had medical procedures done. But what happens when something is believed to have happened to a president, but the president doesn't want to leave office? The 25th uh, Amendment can kind of force a showdown with a president that doesn't want to give up control of power. So if the president is suffering from some disability um, and other people in the government feel like that disability prevents the president from doing their job, there is a mechanism to get rid of the president. If the vice president and a majority vote of the cabinet agree, um, they essentially can elevate the vice president to the presidency against the president's will. If the president refuses to acknowledge this um, and refuses to give up power, it gets a little messy. It would then require the House of Representatives to sort of decide if the initial president gets to stay or if they're going to be kicked out of office because of some disability. Again, um, this has never been used. Um, some argue that perhaps it could have been used or implemented um, with this president, a picture on the bottom of the screen that's Ronald Reagan, who was president from 1980 to 88. Uh, and there's some disagreement, but um, unfortunately, President Reagan, um, after his presidency, was afflicted with uh, Alzheimer's. Some believe that it had set in earlier during the course of his presidency that maybe the 25th Amendment could have been invoked, um, but it wasn't. And it never has been. 